Hi friends, my name is Anastasia and I work in chip design. On this channel I cover the most exciting processors out there. And today I have something really special for you. Some really exciting processor came out just yesterday. Graphcore just announced their new AI accelerator, so-called Bow processor. The thing is, this processor fabricated in 7 nanometer technology node by TSMC, basically the same node as the previous generation of the IPU. However, it contains some interesting and special tweaks that enable 40% performance improvement at 16% lower power consumption. Let's find out where the magic comes from. Graphcore has previously released two generations of IPUs, Intelligent Processing Unit, the last one being in late 2020. And now they have just announced their new Bow processor. And this chip is the first in the world to use wafer and wafer technology, basically staking one silicon wafer on top of another. You know, I talked a lot about chiplets and our 3D future of processors, but this one is actually the next level. So basically stacking not chips, but the whole wafers. This technology is actually WOW technology. It's called wafer and wafer technology. It is a special packaging developed in the cooperation with TSMC. You know, TSMC is very famous Taiwan semiconductor fab, which is, I would say, a couple of steps ahead of the rest of the world in the advanced vertical packaging. So this chip, we call it the Bow IPU. Um, it has a, a logic wafer, seven nanometers, and we bond to it a second wafer, um, which is actually made with a, um, a process that's good for DRAM cells. So it's a completely different process technology. We take two wafers of the same size, bond them together, and the type of bonding is called hybrid bonding. Uh, and bonding two wafers like this allows for a very, very fine pitch of those bonds. So initially in the Bow IPU, we use that fine pitch to achieve a low power supply impedance between the capacitor wafer and the logic wafer. Have a look here. The power comes through TSV, so through silicon bias. The top wafer also integrates high-density deep trench capacitors, which helps to speed up the clock. And why is that? That's because, in this case, the dynamic charge doesn't have to travel all the way from the actual power supply, but it comes from high-density capacitors, which sits on the top of AI cores, so right on the top of the circuit, meaning it's just right where it's needed. And this allowed to push the clock speed from 1.3 something to 1.8 gigs. And that's cool. This is much more shorter and more efficient way to deliver power, right? And power is a big deal for AI accelerators. Actually, just by this new wafer stacking, Graphcore achieved 40% better performance at lower power consumption and this is for the same architecture and the same 7 nanometer process node. And this is truly amazing. This means every processor now delivers 350 teraflops of compute. Anyway, this wafer stacking technology has many more advantages than just with respect to power delivery. But in future, um, the technology will certainly be used to achieve a very high bandwidth of signal interconnect between wafers. Um, and by high bandwidth, uh, so there are two advantages. One is obviously you, you now have an area over which you can send signals instead of just a beachfront around the edge. Mm -hmm. And the second is that the fineness of pitch of the signals you can send is much finer than it is it, it breaking out at the edge. So for example, much finer than the traces of a high bandwidth memory interface. The technology, if used for signals, is certainly capable of passing tens or even hundreds of terabytes per second of information between wafers vertically. And there's no technology that would allow you to do that between chips horizontally. New bow chips are currently shipping to the customers, including US Department of Energy, where it will be used for applications like cybersecurity and computational chemistry. 
GraphQL processors will help researchers to reduce time to train AI models from days of training to hours of training. Similar to the previous generation, GraphCore's bow IPUs will be available in a four IPU configurations, which is capable of 1.4 petaflops. Bow pods can scale from 16 to 1024 chips. For instance, Superscale Bow Pod 1024 packs 350 petaflops of AI compute which will allow to train huge AI models and make new breakthroughs in AI. So, what comes next? GraphCore is already working on the next generation of IPU. They want to build a brain-scale good computer, and that's cool. It is called after a computer science pioneer, Jack Good, who proposed an ultra-intelligent machine, basically a computer which has more intelligence than the human's brain. But we have teased this uh, good computer, as we call it, named after yes. Jack Good, a uh, very powerful um, AI machine that most of our engineers are now working on that will deliver in uh, two years' time. That does include a new generation of IPUs. That new generation does include uh, architectural update. Uh, and we've also said that it includes taking the 3D wafer and wafer technology further by, by stacking logic wafers on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So so those are the things we're public about. GraphCore plans to build a 10 exaflops system with 8192 GraphCore chips. This one will support AI models with up to 500 trillion parameters, which actually exceeds the parametric capacity of the brain. The expected cost of this computer is $120 million. So I'm really looking forward to see it. So how do you benchmark your new IPU uh, to the Cerebras Vapor Scale Engine 2? Well, well, we don't. <laughs> um, so we don't spend any time at all really benchmarking ourselves against other startups. Um, I have great respect for... Uh, some of the engineering that Cerebras have managed to pull off and also some of the other players like Samba Nova. And uh, they, they will all have different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I think AI is going to be broad enough as a, well, it's going to affect all computing. So it, it'll certainly be broad enough to support multiple architectures for quite some time. When we're trying to judge how good our technology is, uh, I mean, really we judge it against the default incumbent, which is NVIDIA. And, and also against other big players who participate, for example, in ML Perf. So mm -hmm. Intel are there with the Havana technology and Google are there with their TPUs. Uh, and those results are public <clears throat> uh, and we do pretty well. Uh, in our latest results, we've, we've managed to outperform in video with our chips, which is not bad. You know? um, and I think one of the things that's very interesting about these architectures is the question of how they're going to scale because the the shift to ever bigger models in AI is, is continuing unabated. And uh, I think you can sort of, you can map out that there have sort of been several steps of growth of models. The first was the breakout of deep learning. Suddenly models of maybe a hundred million parameters were useful and, and learnable, um, but they were limited by how much supervised data you had. <clears throat> so then there's the emergence of, things like uh, BERT and GPT that could train without supervised data and suddenly you can make your models bigger because all the data is cheap, read the internet or something like that. And so you saw model sizes jump from hundreds of millions to hundreds of billions. Now, what stops them from going to hundreds of trillions, which is brain size? Uh, the answer so far has been the amount of compute necessary because as the models scale, the amount of compute is scaled. But actually, that's not the way your brain works. When, when you see something, not all of your neurons fire. Um, your brain has the ability to steer the information to the relevant parts of your brain to affect the relevant synapses. Now, this property is now being harnessed in artificial neural networks with uh, structures like sparsely gated mixture of experts and G shard and things like that, <clears throat> switch transformers. Um, 
And what this means is that we can now increase the model size further so we can build more intelligent AI, if you like, without having to increase the compute because the compute is already very expensive. From a machine point of view, this means that suddenly you need a really, really big memory system that you can access quite quickly. So, so by really big, I mean, if you, if you want something that holds a similar number of parameters to your brain, like 100 trillion, you're going to need something with maybe a petabyte of memory. Mm-hmm. And many of the companies have recognized that. They're sort of thinking, OK, how do we build a machine with a petabyte of memory? But not all of them, I think, have got a credible architectural approach to it. There is no question that the future is going to be 3D and performance boost which GraphCore was able to achieve just by switching to this new TSMC SOSC uh, WOW wafer and wafer second technology is truly impressive. I'm really excited to see more updates on GraphCore processors. We should definitely keep an eye on them. Now this uh, wafer and wafer second technology proven to be a good working solution so i think more and more companies are going to consider using this technology i think maybe cerebras should give the try to stack a wafer on top of a wafer and then just cut off the sides i hope you guys enjoyed this video now you may like to watch another video on my channel where i talk about one of the main graph core competitors cerebras i will link it here Thank you for watching and see you in my next episode. Ciao!